Hi everybody. In this video we're going to be looking at the topic of reaction prediction. In other words, what if I'm only given information about the reactants? How can I figure out what is going to be produced during a chemical change? So that's the topic of this discussion. And uh, first what we want to do is to look at each reaction type and we're going to be considering what are things that we should be looking for that are going to help us to determine what types of products are going to be formed in the different types of chemical reactions. So first let's take a look at synthesis reactions. For my students the limitation for synthesis reactions will be that we're looking at the reaction of one element plus another element. So if you see element plus element in my class that means that it will be a synthesis reaction. For combustion reactions you want to identify that one of the reactants is oxygen that's diatomic oxygen O2. That means that oxygen O2 will show up to the left of the arrow indicating a chemical change. For decomposition reactions we're looking for just one reactant and it is going to be a chemical compound. If you only see one compound listed that means that it's going to be a decomposition reaction. Next let's take a look at both single replacement and double replacement reactions. To uh, identify these for single replacement reactions, we are going to be looking for a, an element, sorry, one element plus an ionic compound. If we're identifying a reaction which is going to be a double replacement reaction, we'll see that there will be an ionic compound plus another ionic compound. One thing to look out for here, sometimes we need to treat water as an ionic compound for certain double replacement reactions then it's helpful to think of water as hydrogen hydroxide. Let's look now at some closer examples of decomposition reactions. If water has electric current run through it, it will decompose forming hydrogen and oxygen. It's important to remember that both hydrogen and oxygen are diatomic elements. We'll go ahead and balance this equation too. We can see that for every two molecules of water, we'll be able to form two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen will be formed. Now let's look at the decomposition of sodium chloride. That will form sodium. It will also form chlorine gas. It's important to remember those diatomic elements and I'm going to put that up for you here in just a moment. Uh, you can see the balanced equation here. Again, really, really important to remember for these types of reactions because we are producing elements, those elements which are diatomic. So we have bromine, iodine, fluorine, chlorine, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, brifclone. That mnemonic will help you to remember the di diatomic element. Okay, on this slide we're going to be looking at examples of double replacement reactions. Remember to identify double replacement reaction. We're seeing one ionic compound plus another ionic compound. We have a positive ion, a negative ion, positive ion, negative ion. Now this is going to be a rearrangement of the ions. So here ammonium ion is a positively charged ion, nitrate is negative, barium is positive, hydroxide is negative. Now we do need to keep in mind the charges of these different ions. The ammonium ion because it's positive can pair with the hydroxide ion because it's negative producing NH4OH. Barium positive listed first can pair with the nitrate negative which is listed second. Please note we need two nitrates because they're minus one to balance the positive two charge of the barium ion. So Ba in parentheses NO3 followed by the subscript 2. We see this again in the reaction of hydrochloric acid HCl and lithium hydroxide LiOH. So again when this double replacement reaction occurs we'll have HCl plus LiOH. We need to pair positive ions with negative ions. The hydrogen can pair with the hydroxide ion. So that's going to produce HOH, hydrogen hydroxide. The other thing which is going to form will be lithium chloride. Remember it's really important that we list the positive ion first, the negative ion second. It's a very common error to do those backwards and list CLLI. Um, keep in mind also that HOH, we can write that as H2O. It is water. Now let's look at some examples of synthesis reactions. We have an element plus an element. It is important if we have a metallic element here, a non-metallic element here to realize that we're going to form an ionic compound. So we want to keep in mind the charges of these elements as they form ions. So magnesium plus sulfur will produce magnesium sulfide. 
that will be a one-to-one -one ratio of magnesium to sulfide ions because of the plus two, minus two charges. When potassium reacts with bromine, potassium is a plus one, bromine is a minus one, so this will form the product KBr, potassium bromide. Now, here's the thing. This is a very common way for students to write this reaction, what you're seeing right now. But what are we forgetting? We need to remember that bromine is one of those diatomic elements. It's Br2 when it's in, in the elemental form on the reactant side. So then we would have to go back and add coefficients in order to balance this equation. Now let's look at some example of, examples of single replacement reactions. Here's silver nitrate that's going to react with copper. That will form copper nitrate, CuNO32. The copper is going to form a plus two ion. It will also form solid silver. In this reaction right here, what we, we might have a hard time identifying what's going to happen. And what we want to do is to realize, after I've balanced this equation, uh, we want to remember that we can think of water, H2O, as being an ionic compound, HOH. That will help us to identify that the positive potassium must pair with the negative hydroxide. Now the other reactant, I'm sorry, the other product formed in this reaction will be hydrogen gas. Remember hydrogen is one of those diatomic elements, so we'll form H2 in this reaction. And I've left this one unbalanced. Our third example, we have iron plus HBr, that's hydrobromic acid or hydrogen bromide, called hydrobromic acid when dissolved in water. Now, for my students, I don't care that um, you need to know which of those products will be formed, either FBr2 or FBr3. Finally, we'll look at some examples of combustion reactions. If we have a hydrocarbon, that's a carbon with hydrogen uh, in, in a compound, those are the only elements, the products are always going to be carbon dioxide and water. Same will hold true for combustion reactions of carbohydrates. The products will be carbon dioxide plus water. I've left these equations unbalanced because here we're just emphasizing prediction of which products are going to form in a reaction. Now the final example here is for the combustion of aluminum or the oxidation of aluminum. It's important here to remember the charge that the aluminum ion will have the charge of the oxide ion. Oxides are always minus two, aluminum's plus three, so the aluminum oxide compound will have a formula of Al2O3. To balance this, we need to find the common multiple of two and three, that is six, so we'll multiply here by two to get six oxygens on the product side, multiply by three here to get six oxygens on the reactant side, multiply by four to balance the number of aluminums on both sides.